All right, guys, I'm at Mark's shop, getting ready to walk into EFI Motorsports here. We're gonna fire the Ultima. He's got the immobilizers deleted. So we've successfully made a good step forward. We can idle the car now. I'm here, I wanna hear this thing in person. So let's head on in and uh, check this out and listen, listen to this baby rumble. Hi everybody, how are you? My name is Dan Dulac and welcome back to my channel where I am building a V10 powered Ultima Evolution convertible. This is episode number 38. If you missed any of the previous 37 episodes, there's a lot to catch up on. Be sure to go check those out. On this episode, we're gonna do a little something different. I am gonna head back over to Mark at uh, EFI Motorsports. He's got the immobilizers disabled. So the engine immobilizer is disabled so we can run and idle the engine for longer than say two seconds. We did find there is also an immobilizer on the mechatronic in the transmission. So unfortunately we can't update the mechatronic software uh, like we did with the ECUs, the engine ECUs. We have to put a new mechatronic board in it that has the immobilizer uh, removed. So not too big a deal. I'm hoping we can do that without pulling the transmission Luck would have it, the access to the mechatronic on the side of the transmission in the chassis is actually pretty good. So we might be able to pull the cover off, get the mechatronic out, reinstall the new one without removing the transmission. So we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. So without further ado, let's jump right in. All right, since the car is at the tuner, what I figured I would do is start on a little body work, namely my rear spoiler. So I've had this in my mind for a long time. I figure since the car is not even here, I get a chance to work on it. Let me show you what I got and some of the mods I'm doing for that uh, swan neck rear spoiler. Back many episodes ago, you saw I, I got a uh, Voltex style swan neck rear spoiler, single element, and the end plates on it are pretty big and I thought I would use those to my advantage. So let me show you what I got in mind here for these end plates. All right, I've got one of the end plates here on my vise clamped in place. As you can see, it's a pretty big end plate. It's about six millimeters thick, so pretty substantial. And what I have done here is first, I created these kind of brackets, these slotted brackets that simply slot in. I will use some 3M double-sided tape to stick them on there permanent. But what these are, are housings for a super bright LED, brake light LED. So I've got an LED in there. You can see I created a slot. It really, and it sticks in there with double-sided tape. It's wedged in there real nice and should look very cool. Kind of F1 style end plate LED, brake light LEDs that I've included on this. So. Let me show you what this thing looks like powered up. Again, I don't think the camera will do it justice, but these babies are bright. They look absolutely awesome. So I'll have one on each side, obviously. And uh, in addition to the regular brake lights on the car, this will just kind of add another element of coolness to the car. I think it's cool. End plate brake lights and uh, Integrated. So what I did was is I actually drilled a hole. Maybe I can pull this off and show you Pull some of this wire out So there's a wire that comes out of here. It comes I drilled the hole through my 3d printed nylon bracket here and then I very carefully I Very carefully drilled a hole in the end plate all the way through and created a passage to this little hole where the wire comes out. This will all be hidden behind the end of the wing. You can see that one of the mounting holes for the wing right here. So um, this will all be hidden and then I will run this wire through the core of the wing down and come out right behind or in front of the swan neck bracket, swan neck uh, wing mount and then these wires these wires, I'll just run down the swan neck into the bodywork. So these wires will be completely hidden. And uh, it was a little tricky, I'd just be careful 
drilling this passage hole and then a little hole here for the wire to come through, but it worked out. So this I will, uh, this bracket, I will double-sided tape. I've got some quarter inch 3M double-sided tape with some adhesion promoter swabs that I'll use so that on this back channel here, I'll put some 3M tape, tape it to the back of this and away we go. So I designed this, of course, as you guys might expect, those of you who've been following me for a while know that uh, I use some CAD software, Fusion 360, and then 3D printed these out. So here you can see my design, my Fusion 360 design with somewhat of a mock-up wing. The wing isn't exact here in this shot, but uh, gives you an idea of the end plate shape and then what those brackets and the design of those brackets looked like on the end plate. So guys, I'm pretty pumped with this. This is, uh, this is something I've been thinking about for a long time and with the car at the tuner, I figured I would give this, give this a little, give this a shot. So I think it looks super cool and uh, add a little extra safety with some extra brake lights and they're on these nice big end plates. So pretty cool, I'm pretty excited. I'm gonna get the other one done and then uh, I gotta work on the wing, the main core of the wing to, to, to feed these wires through and drill tiny little pilot holes in the end of that wing as well. So pretty cool, I'm gonna get after it. I just spent about 10 minutes trying to snake this. I've got a piece of 1 16th welding uh, filler rod there. We've got a little hole in the end and I put my, as you saw, my little hole right here and I actually found the hole. <laughs> I cannot believe it, it just poked through, surprised me. So what I'll do is tape a piece of wire onto this, pull it all the way back through out here and then use that wire as my wire snake through the spoiler to feed the wire. So once I get this side down, I gotta do the exact same thing on the other side, so wish me luck.
Okay, all the wires are in there. I snaked the wires through, so I did this one side. And uh, you can see pretty well concealed in there, hidden wires completely. So just behind this. And looks really, really good. And then from underneath, no wires, no tape, nothing. So that is pretty cool. I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with that. So all I gotta do is the other side and do the exact same thing. Repeat the process, snake a wire through, and this thing will be ready to install. Alright guys, you ready for this? Let's put some power to these uh, LED upright brake lights. Let's do it. Yes. I think that looks awesome. <laughs> Super sweet. Alright, I shut the garage lights off. It's still daylight outside, but Hopefully you can see these a little bit better. They look awesome. And so because the LEDs are inset into that bracket, once you get towards the side here, it disappears. There's no light that comes out the side, which is on purpose. I wanted all the light straight out the back. So, cool. Next up, I'll mount this onto the body. I am gonna have to do some custom brackets for those gooseneck uprights because uh, they're a little bit closer than the original wing mounts from the factory wing, but not a big deal. That will be pretty easy. So I'll get this going once we get the, the rear clam fitted on the car for the last time. All right, guys, I'm at Mark's shop. We're gonna give the Ultima a fire for the first time, or second time. He's got the immobilizers, immobilizers deleted, so we can now run the engine for more than two seconds. So I'm gonna head back into his shop, and uh, we're gonna fire this thing again so you can hear it running at idle. So let's go check it out. All right, guys, I'm here with the Ultima. We're gonna get ready to uh, fire this thing. No cooling in it yet, so we can't let it run too long, but. Uh, Let's fire this thing up, let it idle and for a little bit, let's see what we get. I cannot imagine what this is going to sound like revved. Yeah. And it's revving? Like, we should, we, I mean, you're welcome to. I mean, you know, I, I haven't even checked to see if the throttle will work. Uh, probably will. It should. Awesome. And you can. There's, there's no harm. Just give it a little blip. Yeah, well, you, you know can. what? Let me let me put a little oil in it. Yep. We'll get the the gauge at least meeting reading halfway. Yeah, I mean, let's put it on this way. The, the danger of being over full is not as bad as the danger yeah. of being <laughs> under full. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, cool. Let's put some oil in it. Yeah, and then we'll then we'll just try a little throttle blip. See if that works. It should. And uh, awesome. Have you had to charge the battery at all? What's that? Have you had to check? No. Good. No. That's good. It means there's no parasitic draw. That's good. All right. Here we go. Home sweet home. 
All right, guys, I just got back from Mark's, and uh, as you saw, the throttle pedal was unresponsive. Couldn't get the throttle pedal to go. We did find there were a couple, a bunch more codes, uh, engine codes in the system. So we're gonna work through those one by one, but we are making some amazing progress on this. Uh, I'm about ready to go on a family vacation for a week. So the last update, uh, hopefully when I get back, Mark will have made a ton more progress. Get the transmission immobilizer out with the new mechatronic board in there. So hopefully in about a week's time, I can get the car back home we could do a little test drive uh, on my street here. So anyway, really exciting times. We'll see you on the next one.